What are you saying? What are you saying? What kind of words come out of your mouth? What sort of things are you saying at the moment? God wants us to look at the things we are saying and maybe change some things. Amen? Last week we looked at this scripture in Ephesians 6, 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armour of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. You are wearing Jesus' armour. And there is no scripture for taking it off. It means, this means put on and remind yourself that it's on. It doesn't mean put it on every morning. I've heard people say, let's get up every morning. The first thing I do is put the armour on. Who told you to take it off? You need the armour on while you're sleeping. You need the armour on while any time there's an opportunity for, for the devil to have a go at you, you need that armour on. And like I said last week, as long as you don't say anything, you look like Jesus. You're wearing his armour, you look like Jesus to the devil. He looks at you and thinks, oh no, I'm in trouble now. There's that one that beat me up, took the keys back. And we are reminded, of, uh, uh, he's reminded of Jesus every time he looks at us. As long as we don't say anything. The problem comes when we speak. If we speak our words, as soon as we speak our words, the devil knows, oh, I thought that was Jesus, it's not. As soon as we speak our words, he knows but I tell you what, you can really confuse him by starting to speak the words of God, starting to speak the words of Jesus, and he goes, oh, whoa, I was confused for a minute there. So it really is Jesus talking. As long as we're speaking the words of Jesus, he still believes we are inside that armour. He doesn't, he doesn't even know we're inside that armour. We're in the armour of Jesus. Jesus is stood in front of him speaking Jesus' words, as far as he's concerned. Amen. So how powerful is the human tongue? Proverbs 18, 21 says, Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruit. Our tongue, your tongue, all of our tongues, has the power, the power, not just the ability, the actual power to produce death or life. You have the power to produce death or life. Your own tongue, our own tongues, will bring death or life into our life depending on what we're saying. There's a, there's a, a principle in the Bible about uh, the rule of first mention. Either the first time it's ever mentioned in the Bible or when, or when there's a list, which one comes first. He says, death and life are in the power of the tongue. I've no idea of how many Christians I've heard quote this scripture as life and death are in the power of the tongue. It's not correct. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Why is that important? Because death in this context is the most important because it's the default human setting. Isn't it? Most of the people you know that you know uh, uh, will speak negatively about almost everything. It'll be, it'll be winter time, I'm about to get flu. It'll be springtime, oh, I'm bound to get hay fever, I always get hay fever. And even in the middle of the summer, they're saying, God, I haven't got enough, I haven't got enough money for anything nowadays. And they're all speaking negative. Most people speak negatively. We are not most people. We are separate from most people. We read the Bible. Well, I hope we read the Bible. If you don't read the Bible, start as soon as we leave church, I was going to say tomorrow, no, too late. Start today. Start reading the Bible. You read the Bible so you can speak what it says. You read the Bible so you can speak what it says. And while you're speaking what the Bible says, remember, remind yourself, you look like Jesus the devil and he's not going to about to attack you because you've already defeated him. Amen? We can speak life. We earlier on when we prayed for that young lady, we speak life into a death situation. 
You can speak death into a life situation, but I wouldn't advise it. People, you could be talking about something absolutely wonderful, you probably experienced this, and some wet blanket will come along and speak all the negatives about it. And you're going, no, 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 my God's going to sort this out. Amen? Now here's the bit, the, uh, the, the second part of the verse says, And those who love it, the tongue, will eat its fruit. That means, those who talk the most, will have the greatest harvest, either death or life. It didn't happen too often to me, but I, I have actually had to say to some people, actually usually women, because men can't think fast enough to do this, usually. I said, I'm sorry, you're going to have to slow down, I can't hear as fast as you're talking. And some people are talking so fast, I'm sure half the time they have no idea what they just said. <clears throat> and if you're talking a lot, you've got to exercise uh, restraint somewhere and make sure you're speaking life and not death all the time. When you're speaking life and somebody else starts speaking death, you don't have to rebuke them necessarily, or you might have to actually, but what you need to do is rebuke the power of those words so they won't affect your life. Remember uh, Isaiah says that we condemn every tongue that rises in judgment against us? We condemn it. God's not going to do it. Somebody else can't do it. You have to do it yourself. So do you want to have a good harvest? You have a good harvest, everybody. Nobody wants a good harvest. Anybody want a good? Then speak the words of God. In 1 Peter 4 11, if anyone speaks, let him speak as the oracles of God. If anyone ministers, let him do it as with the ability which God supplies, that in all things God may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom we go belong the glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Whenever we speak, he says, let it be as God's oracle. What's an oracle? As an, an oracle is somebody who is a seer, somebody who is speaking somebody else's words. Yeah? An oracle is somebody who is speaking somebody else's words. Back in, uh, in the time of the Bible, there were people who were called oracles who were speaking the words of the devil. When we do it, we're speaking the words of God. Amen? So if you're going to say anything, let it be God's word. God wants us to speak his word as the answer or the response to everything that happens in our lives. Do you know when something really bad happens in your life, you can go, praise the Lord. You're not praising the Lord for the bad thing, you're just praising the Lord. And the number of times bad things have happened in our lives that we either jumped up and down and praised God or we just shout, praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You've obviously got a way out of this because this is not your will, so we're going to get it sorted in Jesus' name. And that's how you, you talk. You don't, you don't go, oh, no, not another bill, not another problem, not another... And I'm sure we've all been there. We've all felt like that when we in that sort of situation. But he doesn't want us doing that. He wants to speak in God's word. You can be God's oracle. You can speak out God's word in people's lives. Amen. We were at a friend's uh, birthday party yesterday and I was sitting next to a gentleman, very interesting gentleman, and he was, he was a believer as well. But a couple of times I had to, you know, advise him of some scriptures because what he was saying wasn't, wasn't quite right and he was blessed because he hadn't realised those scriptures were that important. Every scripture is important. And when you're speaking God's word into a situation, you will change that situation. That, that situation will change because God's word is now involved. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. When the, devil's, when the devil's trying to, you know, mess up your situation and mess up your life, you speak God's word into that situation and it stops him in his tracks in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And also, when you're speaking, if you're also ministering at the same time, when you're praying for somebody or counselling or just, just even talking to somebody, don't try and do it with your own ability. Do it with the ability that God has freely supplied to anybody who's ministering for him, anybody who's acting as an oracle or seer, or anybody who's doing any ministry, 
you have got all the abilities you will ever need to do that job from him it's not you anymore amen so that on every occasion God will get the glory now when it comes to speaking God's word I was reminded this morning I made a little note for myself I've got my notes on I made a little note for myself I was reminded this morning that includes when we're doing praise and worship because if if you sing the words of the worship songs because you believe they're good and they're right and they're biblical and they're sort of thing that will bless your life if you sing them out you will be blessed by that by the words you're singing they will be part of your life now because you're giving God's word back to him you're speaking God's word whenever you're doing praise and worship that's always the case and you will be speaking God's word but the more you do it the more often you do it the more blessed you're going to be by those words if, you're, if praise and worship is going on and you're not bothering to, to sing or anything then those words they might be up there but they won't affect your life like they would be if you were singing them Amen? We've got to let that happen into our lives Now here's a very important, <coughs> very important scripture here in Isaiah 55:11. So shall my word go, be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to be void, but it shall accomplish what I please. And it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. God has spoken. And he has sent his word to us. His word was, was Jesus in the first place. Jesus is the word made flesh. And now we've got the Bible, which is the word of God and the words of Jesus together. He sent his words to us. He said his word will not return to him void. How does his word return to him? His word returns to him when we speak it out to him. When we speak his word out to him, that's his word being returned to him. That word will not be devoid of power. That word you're speaking back to him will accomplish everything God sent it to do. When we are praying for, for people who need uh, a sickness healing or they need some pain getting rid of or something, when we are praying for a people, God says, I am the Lord that heals you. He also said, believers lay hands on the sick and the sick recover. When we are doing our part and we are praying those words back to God, He does the healing. Because those words we are speaking back to Him are not devoid of power. When we're praying, we rebuke a sickness or a disease or rebuke a pain or we rebuke something negative going on in somebody's life. It is rebuked. Because you are not speaking your words. You are speaking his words. And the number of times I've heard people, I think they would have called it praying, but, you know, kind of, Lord, Lord, I hope, you can, I hope you're hearing us today and we hope you'll... you'll you'll look kindly on this person and, and perhaps you'll heal them if it's your will today that's not his will that's not the word he sent he sent I am the God that heals you you know, by your by the stripes of my son Jesus you are healed that's the words he sent so you've got to send those words back to him which is why you've got to know your Bible you can't send his words back to him if you don't know what he said in the first place amen Hallelujah, hallelujah. And then it says, it will do what God said it will do, and that will please him. As soon as you hear the word, see the phrase about God being pleased, you should immediately remind yourself of the scripture which says that faith without works is dead because faith pleases God. Whenever we're working in faith, it pleases God. So as soon as you see a scripture about pleasing God, you've got to be in faith to do it. You can't do it without being in faith. And the other thing is that in the Bible, every word of God in the Bible has sufficient power within itself to bring itself to pass. If you say, by your stripes Jesus I am healed, because you're quoting the Bible, it must happen 
It must happen because you've just quoted God's word and he said, when you return my word to me, it won't return void. It will do everything I sent it to do. Amen. So we become, not, we don't become God, but we become God's word in this earth. We're the oracle. We're the ones speaking it out. And when we speak God's word out, it happens in Jesus' name. I don't want to get into ideas where people are just saying what you feel like it or if you don't feel like it. But you know, sometimes we forget to do something at the end of our prayer. You can't go into most churches without hearing them praying and what is the last thing they will say when they finish praying? Amen. amen. Why do they say amen? Well, it's not, it's not like yours sincerely at the end of a prayer or thank you Lord or anything like that. Amen means so be it. If you don't say amen, you are not saying so be it. So be it means what I just spoke of God's word back to God, it's happening. So be it. So be it. It's done. It's a done thing. You don't have to do it anymore. You give God's word back to him, it's done. Amen. And sometimes we forget, I hear, hear myself and other people pray, and they forget to say amen at the end of it. It's not, it's not essential, but I'll tell you what, it means you are just making a statement of faith there. When you've just prayed for somebody and you finish off it by saying amen, what you've just said is, but in, those, in that one word, which is equivalent of three English words, so be it, you have just stated those words, God, which you sent to me, which I've just returned back to you, are happening in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen? So remember to say that. Remember to say that. Another thing about speaking, 1 Corinthians 14, 5, Paul says, I wish you all spoke the tongues, but even more that you prophesied. For he who prophesies is greater than he who speaks with tongues, unless indeed he interprets, that the church may receive edification. And we agree with Paul that all believers should pray in tongues. And if you don't pray in tongues, come and talk to me, we'll sort it out. It'll take about 30 seconds. If you're in faith. But also he wants us to be bold enough to prophesy. What's prophecy? Prophecy is simply speaking words in English out to people, in our, in our country anyway, whereas tongues is speaking God's words out. So you're either speaking God, words you understand or words you don't understand. They're both coming from God. And he says that if, if somebody prays in tongues and somebody gives an interpretation from God, it's the same as prophecy. Either way, the church gets built up and gets edified. But the key here is, speaking in tongues absolutely guarantees you will never speak anything negative or wrong or doubtful or unfruitful. You'll never speak words of death. It's impossible. If you're praying in tongues, you're speaking, it can't happen because this is God speaking through you. You don't choose what you say when you're praying in tongues. You just obey and get on with it. And when you're doing that, you will never speak anything negative. So if you're a bit concerned that you might say something negative, pray in tongues instead. And you know sometimes you can just, I've done this hundreds of times, when I know somebody's got an issue but I don't know what the problem is, Lord, I just lift George to you. And I just let God get on with it. And he will pray through me the prayer that George needs. I don't have to do another thing. I don't even have to think about it. I don't have to get my mind involved at all. I just say, Lord, I'm praying for George, whoever George is, just praying for George, and I pray in tongues, and I know the Holy Spirit will pray the perfect prayer for him in the name of Jesus, and because I'm giving God's words back to him, he gave me these words to speak, so I speak them back out. Because I'm doing that, it will happen. Amen. Amen. That's brilliant, absolutely wonderful. And I think we should get excited about praying in tongues. If you don't pray in tongues, come and see, we will sort it. Then there's another way we can speak. In Ephesians 
4.15 Speaking the truth in love, we may grow up in all things into him, who is the head, Christ, from whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies, according to the effective working by which every part does its share, causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. There is speaking the truth, and there is speaking the truth in love. They are different. This way, speaking the truth in love, means the love of God in us can speak to the person. The love of God in us can speak to the person. And speaking this way too causes us, the believers, to grow up into Jesus. He's the head. He's the head of the whole body. And we are joined, <clears throat> this is important for us to realise, we are joined and knit together by what every joint supplies. What's a joint? You don't roll it and smoke it. What, what's a joint? It's not a knee either. This joint is the meeting together of two believers. That's a joint in this context. A joint of your all different parts of the body and a joint is where the two get together. So whenever we fellowship or pray together or just meet one another, a joint has just been formed. And we get built up by what every joint supplies. So as we partake of God's spirit and as we bless one another it just builds everything up have you ever met somebody uh, another believer meet with them a few minutes and you go away you become away blessed that's because that, that joint of the two of you supplied something that wasn't there before and now you've got it amen, amen. thank you Jesus so as we build up ourselves in love as we speak love and because God is love, and we're speaking in love, we become, we become more like him. Would you like to be more like God himself? Absolutely, then speak in love, because he is love. In Mark eleven twenty two, 22, so Jesus answered and said to them, Have faith in God. Or the actual literal translation of that is, Have the God kind of faith. Have the God kind of faith. For assuredly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he said will be done, he will have whatever he says. Therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe you receive them and you will have them. So we need to have a God kind of faith. Do you believe that God kind of faith believes every word that's in the Bible? Yeah. That's the way we should look at it. God had faith that all the words he spoke would come to pass. We have the same faith when we're speaking his word. As soon as you're speaking his word, you have that same faith. Because you're trusting that those words are going to come to pass. But we have to be careful though, because this like many verses in the Bible, is a conditional verse. First it says, whoever says to this mountain. The condition here, you speak to the mountain about God. You don't go to God complaining about the mountain. Don't go to God and tell God about the problems in your life. Tell the problem what God's word says. Yeah? So don't go to God moaning and complaining about all the problems you, and all the mountains you've got in your life because he'll listen to you, he'll hear you but there's not much he can do about it because he wants you to talk to the mountain about him to talk to the mountain about what God's word said Listen, debt, you are not affecting my life in Jesus' name my God says, supplies all of my needs so you can push off in Jesus' name That's how to talk to the mountain about God I've got to say amen at the end of it. See, we can all do it. The second condition is, don't doubt in your heart. This is not a mental thing, this is not a mind thing. If your mind's still struggling with it, don't worry about that. Tell your mind to shut up, because your heart is happy that God's word said that. And that's what's going to happen, amen. Amen? So when your mind is telling you, oh, it can't be done, you tell your mind, shut up, mind, because your mind is part of your soul. 
And you can speak to your soul, because the Bible says, Bless the Lord, O my soul. That's you, the Spirit, the born-again Spirit, speaking directly to your soul, your mind, your will, and your emotions. So when your emotions are getting screwed up and your mind can't understand what's going on, you just tell your soul, your mind, you be quiet, we're doing it God's way. Amen? And the third condition. Believe that it will happen just as you say. You better say the right words then. Believe that it's going to happen just like you say. We have to know what God's word is now. We have to be able to speak God's word and believe in our heart that it's going to come to pass. Don't doubt in our heart. And believe that the words we're speaking will come to pass. See, Jesus said, believe those things he says will be done. He'll have whatever he says. Therefore, I say to you. So Jesus is practicing what he's just preached. So I'm saying this to you. Believe you receive them and you will have them. When you're speaking God's word back to God, it will happen in Jesus' name. So here we all are, as believers, all stood in a row, all looking like Jesus because we've got his armour on. Yeah? Who's going to be the first to let the devil know it's not Jesus in there? We don't want to do that, do we? We want to speak God's word. As if, if there's half a dozen believers all lined up and they all look like Jesus. Confuses the devil anyway because he thought there was only one. But they all look like Jesus. So he can't dare to have a go at you. But until you open your mouth, as soon as you open your mouth, he now knows who's in there. Because he can hear the doubt. He can hear the unbelief. He can hear the worldly words rather than the godly words. And he knows something's not right, so he'll have a go at attacking you. We don't want that, do we? So we need to speak God's word into a situation. And remember, to speak to the mountain about God, rather than moaning to God about the mountain that's in your life. Amen? Amen. So let's do that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen.